Okay, here we have uh, an example of using um, Playmaker in Unity. And what we've got here is a spaceship flying around in space, naturally. And uh, I've used Playmaker to do two things. Uh, the first is to take the place of the stock script that came with this spaceship. And the second is to allow us to interact with our uh, fake jump gate. Uh, which you see here, it's basically just a gigantic slab, um, in order to transition us to another sector. So the first thing we'll look at is using um, Playmaker to move the ship. Now the ship itself came uh, with Space for Unity. It's a demo ship and it has everything you'd need uh, in order to um, have a, a working spaceship in your game. It has uh, movement, uh, and it has um, pitch, roll, yaw, all of that, uh, in addition to giving you the ability to shoot things and to blow things up. It also has some audio for the thrusters, and it also has some particle effects out of each of the thrusters to give you a full, um, <clears throat> a full experience. Uh, if we go into another, we'll load up another sector here. Uh, which actually has the script in action uh, enabled. You can see what the stock script looks like. Now here, uh, when we push down the left mouse button, we move forward, and we can uh, move using the WASD keys. So that's what the stock uh, stock spaceship um, behaves like. So I wanted to replicate that as much as possible using Playmaker. Um, so what I've got here is a uh, state machine on the spaceship. And what we do is we start with an idle state. And this is when you're doing absolutely nothing. So you load up the first game, you load up your game, and you haven't done anything yet. You don't even have your hand on the mouse or the keyboard. You're just sitting there floating in space. So the thing with Playmaker is that uh, it uses states and events. Uh, state is how something exists at a particular point in time. And an event is uh, um, something that happens when when we interact with the system. Uh, so for the first state here is idle. Uh, we're sitting there floating in space doing nothing. But the action that we take uh, over here is the get mouse button down. So what we are doing is we're listening while we're idle for the left mouse button. And when we detect that the left mouse button has been pressed, we're going to raise an event called on move forward. So with Playmaker, uh, when you have a state and an event is raised, you transition to another state. In this case, when we have the uh, raise the on move forward event, we will transition to the forward state. So here in the forward state, what we're doing is uh, a couple things. You can do more than one thing in uh, any given state. So the first thing we're doing is we're casting a ray. Now ray cast is a physics thing. Um, it sends out a uh, kind of like a, I don't know, it, it, it's a ray. Uh, basically it's a straight line f uh, from a particular location um, in a particular direction for a particular distance. And in this case we are using the owner, which is the spaceship, we are uh, casting it in the direct in the z direction along the z axis, which in this case is out of the front of the ship. Um, there is really no front except for what we make of it, and the ship happens to be oriented with the front pointing it along the z axis. So that's what we're doing. Um, the space is self, so that whenever the ship moves, the z axis will always remain the same. So the ray will always be pointing out of the front of the ship. Just like we actually, if we get this planet out of the way, um, here you'll notice that we have our ship and this blue line right here uh, is the z-axis. Uh, our ray will be extended out the front of the ship. And the thing is with, uh, with ray casting is uh, when the ray comes into contact with something, he can identify what it is that it's run into. So when the ray has hit something, we raise the on ray cast hit event. Uh, we will store the object, the game object that was hit by the ray into this variable called player ray hit. And we, uh, I'm sorry, that, that's, uh, that's a Boolean value. So just to let us know, yes, we did hit something. 
we store what we hit into this global variable called player ray object hit. Now a global variable will be available to all state machines uh, in the scene, so we can reference that from other state machines if we need to. And we don't store anything else. Um, we do have debugging turned on so that our ray, when we see it, uh, will be cast as yellow. Uh, normally you don't see rays because they're physics objects, um, and you don't need to see them. When we release the mouse button, though, because we are moving forward at this point, when we release the mouse button, we will tr we raise the uh, the on idle event. And according to our canvas here, when we have on idle, uh, we transition back to the idle state. So if we play this, we'll be able to watch uh, Playmaker here uh, highlight the states that we're at uh, in green. So let's get this jump gate out of the way so we can just see our transitions. So here with our spaceship, we will, let's see, click the spaceship. Okay, so now we notice we're idle and we're not doing anything, but we, when we use our mouse button, we'll be uh, transitioning to forward and the green highlights and uh, to show us which state we're at. So we click down the mouse button and we release and we click and release so uh, that shows us um, so how we can debug with uh, Playmaker so we can see exactly what's going on so we're going to bring this guy back in and we're going to select our spaceship again because as we're going and our spaceship is moving forward we're casting our ray now when we uh, detect that the ray actually hits something we move on to this state which is check ray hit so as soon as we hit something, we want to figure out what we know that we've hit something. We need to figure out what did we hit, and if the thing that we hit requires us to do something, what do we need to do? Right now, uh, this would be the hub. Uh, this would be the hub of uh, using basically ray casting for anything from the front of the ship. In this specific case, we only want to detect is the thing that we hit a jump gate. So our action here. Uh, what we are doing is we are checking the tag of the game object that we hit against uh, what we are specifically looking for. So here you'll notice uh, the game object that we want to check is whatever we have in the player ray object hit. So back here, when we cast our ray, and when we store the hit object, we store it in player ray object hit. So as soon as we hit that object, it stores it in the variable. We transition to this state, and we refer to that variable to say, hey, give me the reference to what we hit. Then what we want to do is check the tag. Now, game objects in Unity have tags, and you can use it to classify objects, specifically for purposes like this. Um, this block here, uh, our tag is jump gate. It's right here. So all of our jump gates and only our jump gates will be tagged with this particular uh, tag. So we'll be checking... Uh, the object that we hit to see if it if it has the tag jump gate and if the, if it's true if it is a jump gate we will raise the on hit gate event uh, if it's false then um, essentially uh, we wouldn't we leave this blank here uh, what we could do theoretically is add more actions to check for other tags so if we hit uh, if we hit another ship if we hit a space station, if we hit an asteroid, if we hit a planet, a star, whatever, uh, we could take other uh, we could take other actions. Now that remember that that casting array is a physics um, is a physics thing, so um, it doesn't have to be a, f a physical object. We could actually put a, a pretty large and visible uh, collider around this planet here, uh, so that if you approach the planet too closely, you'll you'll essentially get warnings that you have to pull up, uh, you can't go into the atmosphere, or you'll explode. But <clears throat> that's way beyond what we're trying to do here. So once we actually determine that, yes, the thing that we did, the ray hit, is a jump gate, what we want to do is pop a UI. Uh, so the user interface here um, will show up along the top of the screen with two buttons, and basically says, do you wish to travel to the next sector, yes or no? Uh, if we opt to uh, travel to the next sector, we will send the event on jump OK. And if we choose not to, we'll send the, raise the event on jump cancel. 
Uh, on jump cancel will move us to idle, at which point we can then go ahead and do other things. But um, if we hit on jump OK, we'll move to the load level state, in which case we're loading level sector 2. Now right now this is hard-coded, eventually these sectors will be variables placed on the individual jump gates so that the prefabs can handle you know, the distribution of, of players. Now the issue with this is that it's kind of automatic. As soon as you approach the jump gate at a particular distance and the ray hits the gate, you will see the UI. Which means if you hit cancel, chances are uh, as soon as you try and move, the ray will hit again, and you get the UI, and the ray will hit again. So there's still a little bit of work that needs to go uh, to go on here. But if we keep this, um, if we keep the state machine diagram up here, we'll be able to follow the the debugging. But uh, let's give it a shot. So we'll hit play, and now we'll be. Uh, you'll notice here uh, we have some um, some tags that show us which uh, which states are in effect. Uh, the pitch. The pitch, one of the idles, and the roll actually uh, deals with the movement, which we'll look at in a second. But right now, um, when we move forward, one of the tags switches from idle to forward because that's essentially the state that we're moved, that we're uh, that we're in when we're actually moving forward. So as we move forward, when we get to a certain distance, if you watch here in the debug window, um, I'm not sure if we can actually see it. Uh, you probably it moves pretty quickly and it may not register on the video, but as we're moving forward, you'll be able to see the ray being cast um, out of the front of the ship. So when we get when we approach the uh, the jump gate and the ray hits it, we'll get our pop up. Okay, so now we are at the jump gate. Do you wish to travel to the next sector? If we hit no, um, nothing happens. So let's just get ourselves out of the way. But if we turn around and head back to the jump gate, uh, that'll trigger again. Our UI will trigger again. So this time we'll say yes. And, as you can see, we are now in a different sector. Um, this, I, I kind of broke this one, so... So... Um, that's essentially uh, from moving from sector one to sector two. So if we head back, actually, uh, we are in sector one. So the second state machine that we have is the movement. Now, like I said, the uh, the ship itself came with uh, movement out of the box, but I didn't want to use that because I wanted to uh, be able to use um, uh, specific states state machines on any. Um, ship that I might want to, uh, the player might want to choose. So um, the movement actually is broken out into three different sections. There's the pitch, the roll, and the thrust. So the first one we'll look at is thrust, and it's very simple. Uh, we start with an idle state, again, doing nothing. And then what we do is uh, we get the mouse button down. So when you hold down the mouse, the left mouse button, we raise the on move forward event. And uh, while we're idle, we want to stop the audio, essentially, because you're not moving, you don't need to hear the thrusters. So once we do raise the on move forward uh, event, we head over to the thrust state. So the f while we're in motion, or in order to actually do the motion, we, we are using translate. Um, translate, in, in this case, meaning to essentially translate from one quote position unquote to another. Um, what we're doing is we are moving the game object along the, the Z axis um, at a, a value of 100. So this is essentially the speed. Now the the speed eventually uh, you know could be a calculation of the mass um, of the ship so that larger ships move slower and so on and so forth. For now it's hard-coded because I haven't figured out how to read and do math on variables yet. But the space is self again so that we are always moving in the Z along the positive Z axis in relation to the ship and not into the world. If we moved uh, in, along the Z axis in relation to the world, if our ship here was actually situated like this, we would essentially be moving uh, forward like this if we were moving along the z-axis of the world. So we certainly don't want to do that. That would be stupid. So we are actually moving um, 
along the uh, the z-axis of, of the owner, which is the ship. Um, while we're moving, we're playing the uh, the audio, the thruster sound, and we will continue to do this until we let up on the left mouse button, at which point we'll just simply transition back to idle and we'll stop. So if you notice, it's extremely uh, simple. It doesn't really take into account things like, that people would expect from a, a space flight game like physics or you know inertia, things like that. Um, I haven't decided if I wanted to go that far. It's not really a realistic simulator. It's, you know, it's, I'm sure someone would complain if I didn't, but, you know, hey, we'll see what happens. So, in addition to the thrust, what we need to do is we need to be able to move around. So, let's get this guy out of the way. And here on the spaceship, what we've got is uh, the pitch, which is moving the nose up and down. And in this case, we simply... Um, have this spaceship controller which I have miraculously found uh, on a forum and uh, what it does is essentially is it'll, it allows you to move or to you know rotate your game object around a particular axis axis which is um, referred to by either pitch which moves uh, which rotates your um, your nose which in this case uh, pivots on the x-axis uh, yaw which um, actually is, it, it's kind of confusing, my understanding is yaw is if the ship was moving, um, if the nose was staying horizontal and moving left and right, and then roll, which which in that case would be a, a rotation around the y-axis, and then roll being rotation around the z-axis, so the wings would uh, essentially, um, you know, barrel roll uh, from this, uh, in, in this case, so um, the axis multiplier is the speed, again so uh, we'd have to modify that based on the, the mass of the object so pitch here uh, use owner up and down roll in this case is to uh, you know do the barrel roll so as we move forward uh, let's see so we'll see thrust and here we're idle so that's in green so when we push forward and when we push the left mouse button we'll thrust uh, we'll move to the thrust state and we'll move forward and then when we let go, we're back to idle. So if we want to uh, look at pitch, uh, pitch in this place, uh, in this case, is always going to be active, uh, except it's not going to actually do anything until we actually um, use, uh, employ the axis. Now the axis is something that's set um, in the, uh, the in the um, the build setting, uh, the I'm sorry, control settings uh, of of the game, which. I'm not sure. Ah, here we go. Input. So the axes right here, we've got uh, we've got things like the horizontal and the vertical axes. So that's what these uh, that's what this is essentially reading reading off of. But um, if we know, if we uh, push W, we move down. If we push S, we we'll move up. And while we because uh, it's actually a different state machine, because it's not the same. Uh, state machine as thrust, uh, we can actually do both at the same time. So as we're moving forward and we push W, we'll pitch down. And if we press up, we'll pitch up. So that allows us to both move forward and, um, you know, up and down. Here in this case, we're uh, roll, again, allows us to roll to do the barrel roll, but again, because it's individual, we can move forward at the same time. So essentially, uh, all of this um, took practically no time at all. I wrote the jump gate um, logic down on paper and uh, sat down in front of the system and just banged it out in like less than five minutes. Um, I just added the transition UI uh, this evening, and that took only, I don't know, 30 seconds to do, um, which includes drawing, uh, throwing in, you know, the UI elements. So it's obviously not super sexy, but, uh, you know, there's, there's bridge uh, actions which allow us to integrate with things like NGUI, which I have, but I haven't uh, actually learned how to use yet. Um, so you can actually go ahead and make it, make it look a lot better. Um, and then there was the, the fortunate uh, encounter of the spaceship controller, 
um, out in the forums. So uh, that's a, that's what you can do with Playmaker. Um, it would have taken me a lot longer to do this um, scripting by hand um, because I would have had to have you know researched all of the uh, all the information, um, figured out <laughs> having to deal with the things that I'm just not good at, like uh, you know the math involved with uh, uh, the translation of the of the ship as we move forward. But again, the, what we are missing at this point, though, is some of that math. Uh, things like the inertia, things like um, setting it so that we um, we get our information from our objects so we can tell you know which uh, sector we're transitioning to instead of hard coding it. Other things like that, uh, the mass of the ship to uh, set the speed of the thrust and so on and so forth. So um, I'm going to, this is usable uh, for further testing and it will end up being refined, I'm sure. Uh, one thing that I do need to do is uh, this forward right here uh, for the jump gate detection and this thrust right here essentially do the exact same thing. Uh, they both listen for the mouse button. Uh, actually, idle right here listens for the mouse button and transitions to this thrust. And the jump gate listens for the mouse button and transitions to this thrust. So uh, what I need to do is I need to bridge that by using a global event so that all I have to do is have one person listen and then when the event uh, fires, that uh, two different state machines respond and do exactly what they're supposed to do. Uh, so I don't end up replicating, you know, splitting the code, um, making it a little less manageable. Doing it this way, of course, allows me to uh, use the jump gate specifically. Uh, this is essentially uh, prepackaged right here, uh, especially once I get the variable onto a jump gate that allows me to determine uh, which sector to transition to. At that point, it'll be more or less entirely encapsulated. Uh, so there's certainly, I suppose, there's benefits to actually leaving it as is. So uh, that's that's Playmaker. Um, and hopefully, it's it's extremely powerful, and I, I'm very pleased with it, and I'm looking forward to using it uh, for uh, more... Um, more development in Project Universe.